What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to yet another AI video. In this one, I'll be showing you how to install the brand new AI Code Whisperer from Amazon. Consider this GitHub Copilot, but free. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Amazon Code Whisperer website where you can read about the project. Essentially, it's free to use, which is really good, but it may not be forever. On top of this, they give you unlimited code suggestions and reference tracking, which is really cool. If we scroll down, code with confidence, whenever it gives you a suggestion for code, it'll tell you a reference of where it got it to help prevent stealing code, license issues, etc., which is really good. GitHub Copilot and other solutions don't offer this, I think, at all. On top of this, something also pretty cool is 50 security scans per user per month. What is this? Well, it'll scan for XSS issues, OAuth issues, etc., and is just generally really good to scan your code for security issues. Obviously, it will be flawed somewhat, but how Having improvements to security in any way is usually really good. It works in VS Code and the JetBrains IDEs, AWS Cloud9, Lambda Console, etc., and supports these languages Python, Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, C, -sharp, and probably a few other languages. There's 15 supported currently. Scrolling down, it's apparently a lot faster, though AWS. Code Whisperer seems to generate code line by line more often than giving you full paragraphs of code. This is pretty much a fence point. It's a pro and a con somewhat. Obviously, it'll be slightly slower than the GitHub method of just giving you a ton of code, but at least going line by line, working with you, it should have a better understanding of what's going on and what you're expecting. All we need for this is one of the supported IDEs, completely free. You can click Use Code Whisperer Free here to be taken to the Getting Started section where they have videos about how to use it, articles, etc. All we need to do is open the VS Code Extensions Marketplace here or the JetBrains Marketplace here. You'll find both of these down below. When you get here, all you need to do is click Install if you're on Visual Studio Code. Otherwise, on IntelliJ IDEA, use the Get button up here. I have VS Code, so I'll install it here. I'll click Continue and just make sure it opens up in VS Code. When it opens up, you'll see something like this. Just click Install up here, and the AWS Toolkit will then be installed on your PC. All we need to do now is connect it to AWS. I'll close some of these notifications. I'll update later. We can change anonymous usage metrics by clicking Settings here and disabling telemetry if you want. I'll be doing that. All we need to do now is connect it to AWS. So click here to open the Configuration Wizard, and we'll be signing in with AWS. I'll click the first option here, copy code and proceed and open this in our browser. From here, I'll paste the code in and click next. Now we'll need to create an AWS account. Otherwise, you can sign in using the button here. I'll create one for myself. After entering an email and a name, we'll be sent a verification code that will copy and paste in, verify, and we can now set a password. Now we need to allow this and we should now have access in VS Code. So tapping back into VS Code, using the AWS icon on the side, that's new, we'll select a connection, AWS Builder ID, now we're signed in, change AWS regions. We'll hit F1 to open the command palette and type in AWS show or hide regions. So show or hide regions, we'll click this, and now we need to choose one or more regions for AWS Explorer. I'll choose all of the African servers, we just have Cape Town, so I'll click OK, and that's pretty good. Actually, let's maybe add London. It's a bit further away, but whatever. OK, now we should see them in the AWS Explorer here, though if I refresh, I don't see anything. Focus on Explorer view. Nope, that didn't do anything. Anyways, I'm pretty sure we're connected and we can hide regions later on. Finally, configure your tool chain. The AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio Code supports multiple languages that you can interact with AWS. This walkthrough describes how to set up the tool chain for each of these languages. Now, as far as I understand, these are just how to connect to the AWS system and use things like Lambda functions, etc., pretty much tying you into the AWS ecosystem. Obviously, if you have other plugins like Tab9, GitHub, etc., you'll need to temporarily disable them. Well, you don't need to, but it's probably a good idea. Otherwise, we'll get conflicting reports. Opening a new file here, test.py, we'll be able to start typing. So print hello world. Hitting enter, we can wait for a code suggestion, or on Mac, we can use option C. On Windows, we can use alt C. Now we have a suggestion here. I can hit tab to accept it, and now we have it here. Awesome. Let's go print prime numbers. Alt C or option C once more. It'll wait for code whisperer and give us a option here. Now, this isn't really gonna continue. We need to hit alt C to get more suggestions, and there we go. I'll go ahead 
and run it with F5 just to see what happens. And there we go, two, three, five, seven, etc. Cool. But obviously hitting Alt C or Option C is pretty annoying. We can head across to the AWS tab here, undo Developer Tools at the bottom. We'll expand Code Whisperer, and you'll see Resume Auto Suggestions. Hitting this, we can just keep typing, say something funny to the user, and just leaving it for a second or two, we should get an auto suggestion. Or maybe not. This could have been a bit wild. Alt C connecting to Code Whisperer. Okay, there we go. Anyway, it does work pretty well. Yep, now that we connected, it seems to be working. Well, working. Anyways, we can run a security scan, which will go through our code and look for any issues. Assuming you have a big coding project, a website or something like that, you can run a security scan and find out certain security issues that are auto detected by AWS Code Whisperer. And we can also open the reference log here to find out what came from what. If we type in, oh, well, there's a suggestion, the Fibonacci series. We can just hit tab to keep these auto suggestions. And assuming this code came from somewhere on the internet, it would be referenced here, but maybe this is just simple code that it doesn't need to be referenced anywhere. Whatever. On the code, obviously it works as you'd expect. We can push this number crazy high and watch our PC melt. But anyways, you get the point. Oh, wow. Okay, well, thanks for that suggestion. That seems brilliant. I'll run this, uh, maybe never. Anyways, that's really about it for this super quick video. Hopefully you found this video useful. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.